Hello, everyone. Okay, I'm going to bring to you the Sunday School lesson, the week of September 29th, lesson number five. The title of our lesson is Daniel Sees Future Kingdoms. Our lesson text is coming from Daniel, the eighth chapter, verses 19 through 26. We have three outlines for this lesson. The first outline is Future Kings, Daniel 8, 19 through 22. The second outline is Fear, Fearsome King, Daniel 8, 23 through 24. And the third outline is Final King, Daniel 8, 25 and 26. Um, great lesson, wonderful lesson. I'm going to be doing a lot of expository reading, um, making sure I don't leave anything out. Um, so I'm going to read the introduction, whisper a word of prayer, and get into the lesson. The introduction, since evil is so pervasive, some people wonder why God does not totally eliminate wickedness from the world if he's so omnipotent. They forget that he is patient, not willing that any should perish, but that all repent. And that's Second Peter 3 and 9. Evil had a beginning, and evil will have an end. In the meantime, we must grapple with questions concerning evil, human suffering, and the various inequities of our world. We sometimes think that if we had the same power God has, we could just destroy all evil, and that, and that would be the end of it. To do so, however, would entail our own destruction, for we are all part of the problem of evil. So while Satan attempts individuals to sin, he also works through governments and powerful people in our world. This was true in Daniel's vision of the he-goat and the ram. Daniel foresaw that a particular, particular I'm sorry, malevolent ruler would arise and attempt to destroy God's people. This prophecy has been fulfilled with stunning accuracy which can give us confidence in his other prophecies that are not yet fulfilled. So we can have confidence in those prophet prophecies that have been fulfilled and helps us to have confidence in those prophecies that will be fulfilled. They will come to pass. Um, like I said, we have verses, um, Daniel 18, verses 19 through 26. We're going to whisper a word of prayer and get into the lesson. Lord God, thank you. Thank you for this day, God. Thank you for a day we've never seen before and a day we will never see again. Lord, I ask that you bless each and every one of us with the understanding of your word and what it means to have faith in you, God. I pray that this lesson touches each and every one of, one of our hearts and that you may give us a better of a stand, understanding of the prophecy that you are teaching us today. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. Um, I'm going to read. Um, I always um, read a little bit. I have like a few little notes. I like to just read um, a little bit of this before I, I break down the scriptures. Um, just to kind of give you an idea of what the lesson is talking about. So Daniel had a vision of a ram with two uneven horns charging forth to conquer all who opposed it. He then saw a he-goat, which had a single long horn, run into the ram, shattering its two horns and trampling the ram into the ground. The goat became very strong, but his horn was broken off at the height of his power. It was replaced by four sm similar horns, four smaller horns. A little horn rose from one of the four horns and extended his power southward, eastward, and to Israel. Um, and then we're going to have the vision that's going to be interpreted. Now, when Daniel sought an explanation, and an, 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 the angel Gabriel was directed to provide him with understanding. And Daniel was so fearful when Gabriel approached him that he fell on his face and into a deep sleep. Gabriel, lift, Gabriel lifted him to his feet and spoke to him. Now, Gabriel gave Daniel understanding about the end of the indignation. And this was the time of God's disciplinary wrath upon Israel. This time began um this time of discipline began with the captivity of the northern kingdom by the Assyrians and and continued with the captivity of Judah under the domination of the Babylonians. 
Babylonian, Medo-Persian, Greek, and Roman empires. So um, that captivity of Judah was under that um, those dominions. Now the last phrase of the indignation will include the great tribulation and the career of the Antichrist, who was foreshadowed in by the fierce king in Daniel's vision, 8, 23 to 25. Now this king was Antiochus um, Epiphanes. The indignation will be concluded with the return of Christ and the establishment of his universal kingdom. Okay, so we're going to, um, I'm going to, well, I'm going to read a little bit more of some information. And then I'm going to read the scriptures and get into the lesson. We live in exciting yet scary times, and that is so true. Many parts of the world are in turmoil. It often seems the end is near. Several times in scripture, scripture, we are told to look for certain things to happen before the end comes. Our lesson this week shows us some of those important things through another of Daniel's visions. And so the, the focus here is actually um, to understand that God reveals his eternal plan to us to en encourage and to comfort us. And we also should pay attention to um, um Pay attention to truths God reveals to us in Scripture and to find confidence in God's activity in history through prophecies that have already been fulfilled. Now, many of us have come across rumors about the last days and the end of time. If we pay attention to the truth of God's word, we can see what he himself has said about these things. And in our lesson text this week, we look at one one we look at one vision Daniel had that shows us some of the things that must come before the end. And this vision provides not just information but encouragement to all Christians. Okay, so I'm gonna go to these scriptures. The future kings, fearsome king, final king. Those are the outlines. Um, Daniel. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last um, end of the indignation, for at the time appointed the end shall be. The ram which ha which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. And the great horn that is between the eyes is the first king. Now, now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it. Four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation but not in his power. Because you remember when he talked about the the horns, one having two horns, and then you had one, um, and then that one had a, one horn and broke down the other one, that, you know, the mightier one, and then four horns came up out of that. So this is kind of giving you an understanding of what that's talking about. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors, when the transgressors are come to, to the full, a king fierce of countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And in his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice. I mean, yeah, practice. And um, shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Wow, because we know Satan's all about destroying God's people, right? We know that. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. And the vision of the of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore shut thou up the vision, for shall for it shall be many days. So now we have here um, future kings, and that's um, verses nineteen through twenty two which I have read, but I'm going to break them down now um, in sections. And um, we're going to go just break it up like that. So now we have future kings. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. The ram which thou sawest, having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. And the great horn... And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up. Now you know they're talking about that king, that horn that was broken. 
and then the four um, horns that came up out of that one, which is talking about now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it. Four kingdoms shall stand up for one nation, out of one nation. So four kingdoms are going to stand up out of one nation, but not in his power. So here we have in his vision, Daniel saw both a ram and a goat. The ram had two horns um, with one horn longer than the other. The ram was charging in several directions and no beast was able to stand before it. Um, from the west came a goat with a notable horn between his eyes. The goat attacked and defeated the ram later. The horn of the goat was broken in its place. Four other, other horns grew. So see, that just explains those verses. Um, and that's, you know, those verses that I just read. That explains it. Now, as we will see, the angel's interpretation, um, the ram represents the Medio Persians. Their empire that would um, soon supplant Babylon after the fall of Belshazzar. Now, the goat represents the Greek Empire under Alexander the Great. The vision accords um, with what we um, observe in history. Now, af after Alexander died um, at a rather young age, his empire was divided between four of his generals, represented by the four horns rising out of the large horn that was broken. So... From one to one of the four horns, a smaller but very powerful horn grew. The, this little horn exerted his power in many directions. So can you imagine um, that one being powerful and he just exerts his, his power in many directions, especially toward the pleasant land or Israel? He set himself up as Israel's king and prohibited the people's normal religious practices. So you see, you got to be careful of these people that's going to set up power. Um, and you see here, he set up power. Um, he set himself up. Now, he set himself up as Israel's king, and he prohibited the people from normal religious practices. And um, we know that there's going to be, um, during the tribulation period, the Antichrist shall come. And we also see the spirit of the Antichrist now here in the world with all of these people trying to rise up and, you know, be this superpower and, they, and they're drawing all kind of people to them. And you see there's a lot of people who, um, that's why we got to be so um, busy with God's work that we draw God's people to him. We got to go out there and get the people. We can't let the devil continue to get um, and destroy people. God has, Jesus died for all people, and he loves them all, and he wants everyone, but not everyone will accept him, and those people will be deceived, but during the tribulation, the Antichrist shall rise in power, and he will control everything, so now we have, um, in Daniel 20 and 21, where, um, were it not for the fact that Gabriel revealed the correct interpretation concerning the ram and the goat, we can imagine that there would be a great deal of speculation concerning their identity. But as we see here, the angel Gabriel did um, reveal the correct interpretation of that. So as revealed by an angel, by the angel, however, the two horns of the ram are the kings of Media and Persia. Ancient Persia encompassed much of the territory that is now Iran. So listen to this. Think about it. I know we hear a lot about when we look at the Bible about towns and places that we don't really know where they are. Um, but you have some Bibles that will give you maps and will show you these locations of these places. But now you see that ancient Persia that we're talking about in this lesson encompasses much of the territory that is now known as Iran. And we know Iran. The Medes were um, at first a loose confederation of tribes living in part of modern-day Iran and perhaps also in Armenia. Um, in time, these tribes united and sub subjugated increasingly more territory. By the time of Daniel, the Medes and the Persians had united as a formidable empire that threatened even mighty Babylon. Now, as Daniel 5 indicated, indicates, Belshazzar's arrogance led to the demise of his kingdom, which was given to the Medes and the Persians. 
Um, so now we're going to, so that kind of gives you an idea of, um, I'm going to read a little bit more, but that kind of gives you an idea of what those lessons are talking about. So go back and study it. Um, after the breaking of the great, great horn, that was the death of the, um, that was the death of Alexander. Four kingdoms arose out of his kingdom. Now, Alexander's empire was divided um, among four of his generals who struggled for control. Although, power, although powerful in their own realms, none of Alexander's successors had the power of his united empire. None of them had the power. Nor did they control as much territory as he had. Besides wanting to control both people and territory, Alexander and his successors had another goal. The Hellenization of the world. Believing that Greece was superior to other nations, these men sought to spread Greek philosophy, language, and culture. So that's what they sought to do. Now this became particularly significant during the, um, the apostolic period when the New Testament had, was penned in Greek. So Western culture has been greatly influenced by Greek thought due to Alexander's conquest. So now we'll have the fearsome king. Verses 23 and 24. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding, um, dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper, and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. So here we see great sin. This is where we see great sin. So as Gabriel continued to interpret the vision for Daniel, he declared that a king, that a king, um, fierce countenance would arise. Wow. This indicates that he would be stern and severe, not only in his looks, but also in his actions. That he was able to understand dark sentences means that he was cunning, a master of intrigue and deception. All of this would occur in the latter time of their kingdom. That is, um, as the carved up kingdom of Alexander that was about to be conquered, conquered, that was about to be conquered by the Romans. Now, all of this would occur in the latter time, which I said out of their kingdom. Um, Rome was the iron kingdom seen in Nebuchadnezzar's dream and the fourth beast, beast that would devour all the earth. Now, keep in mind, all of these events occurred a long period for they they occurred for a long period of time so keep in mind um um of that and like i said you could go and you could get some bibles that will have charts and you know um areas of where all of this stuff is now the clear um consensus among bible scholars is that this passage refers to the rise of antiochus epiphanes because of the stunning and detailed accuracy of the, of his prophecy um, most liberal scholars suggest that Daniel um, could not have foretold these events hundreds of years be before, but, but guess what? They have before they happened, and they must have been written after the fact. But however, if Gabriel actually appeared to Daniel and revealed the meaning of the vision, there is no reason to doubt that Daniel wrote these things. Now, there is a great power. Um, now, 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 um, we also see that there was a great power. And I'm going to skip down a little bit and um, go to verse 24 now. Antiochus, he, um, he wielded formidable power. Now, when these things came to pass, it appeared that many, that he, many, many, to, it, it, it appeared to many that he was unstoppable. Although his evil was great, it was not by his own power. Some take um, this to mean that in his sovereign plan, God permitted, he permitted the rise of Antiochus to accomplish his divine purposes. So, you know, God will let evil take place to accomplish what he is trying to accomplish in our life and in our world. So, um, now you think about it. Evil things will happen. Evil people rise up. But we always do see, why doesn't God do away with evil? Why doesn't he get rid of these evil people? Because God, sometimes he has to get has to use those people to get us to see what, what he wants us to see and also to sit us down and show us who he is. Because, you know, we get so busy in life, we don't have time to try to find out. We read the Bible. Yeah, we read it, but do we understand it? 
So sometimes God has to show us and he has to use those evil people. And sometimes he has to let them rise up in power to show us that. Um, and sometimes to let them bring us down so we can get to the place to where we trust God and we believe him. We live for him. And then we go out and get others that we can bring to Christ. We got to stop letting Satan win all of these young people over. We got to stop letting them, even the older people, just stop letting them win us. Stop letting them take us from the church. Stop letting them draw us away. We got to do better. So most believe it refers to a, a diabolical force that were enabling this evil ruler to succeed. Now, just as the dragon will give the, um, the beast power in Revelations 13, 1 and 2, so it was with Antiochus who was a type of the final world dictator. So he was a type of the world, the final world dictator who we know to be, will be the Antichrist. The beast of Revelation, who is yet to come, and we know that is the Antichrist. Um, for this reason, both Antiochus, the type, and the beast, the anti-type, um, are called by the same name, the little horn. So now um, we're going to go to, um, I'm going to read a little bit of this. The prediction in Daniel 8.24 that Antiochus would destroy the mighty probably refers to how he ascended um, the throne and maintained power. Okay. Now, um, these despots, despots um, often destroy anyone in their way. Yeah, the holy people. They destroy anyone in their way. The holy people. And the holy people is a reference to the Jews, especially those who would not obey his demands. For details of the revolt against Antiochus, you can see one and two Maccabees in the, um, I can't, Apocrypha, Apocrypha, I can't even say that. Now, these books are not in scripture, but they do provide helpful um, historical information. So now I'm going to get to the final king. And though his policy, verses 25 and 26, the final king. And through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall, he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the princes, the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. And the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be many days." So now we have the temporary victory, and we know this is of this one that is going to be in power at that time. So this is a, but it's a temporary victory. And so is Satan reign. It's temporary. He will not reign forever. God is going to destroy him. He's going to do away with him and all those who follow him. His reign is temporary. But our reign with God is forever. Um, Gabriel's description of the fierce king may have been pointing not only to Antiochus, but also beyond his time. Now, this is often the case um, in, in biblical prophecy. It may have an initial fulfillment, but there, are, there may also be an ultimate fulfillment related to the first or second coming of Christ. Now, there's no question among expositors that Antiochus is in view with prophecy. What was prophesied was fulfilled literally through him. So you hear me? What was prophesied was fulfilled literally through him. However, the prophecy looks beyond Antiochus um, to a future person. And we know that future person to be the Antichrist. Of whom Antiochus, I'm sorry, Antiochus is only a foreshadowing. So we see the Antiochus um, of the prophecy that had been fulfilled through him um, it only is a foreshadowing of the Antichrist that is future to come in the future. This one, this com this coming one is said to stand against the Prince of Princes, and we know that. To stand, we know who the Prince of Princes is. This can be none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the power of this evil ruler would be broken without hand. That means his destruction would not come by human power, but by divine intervention. While there are conflicting reports concerning the um, details of his death, sources indicate that Antiochus Epiphanes, he died suddenly in ba Babylon after um, hearing of the Jewish victories under Judas Maccabees. Maccabeus. So now we have the true vision. 
Reassured by Gabriel that the vision was true, Daniel was told, now Daniel was told, this is the end of it, the end of, part of, the, of the verse, verse 26. The vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore, thou, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be many days. But Daniel was told to seal up the vision in the sense of concluding it. Not in the sense of keeping it secret. Just concluding it. You know, just let, this is it. Conclude that. Um, because it needed to be preserved for the future. Now, he kept he kept in, in his mind that, um, I'm sorry, he kept it in his mind and later preserved it in writing when he wrote it down under the Holy Spirit's inspiration. So history has confirmed that both the near term and the end time fulfillments of the prophecies recorded by Daniel would not occur until many had passed. Now, Antiochus arose few hundred years after the time of Daniel. Now, since then, many others have arisen who fits the pattern of the Antichrist. And so we know here, we know there's many that fit the pattern of the Antichrist, but we know that's the spirit of the Antichrist that's here now. The actual Antichrist we know will arise in the time of the tribulation, period. I plan not to be here, and if you are saved, then you should plan not to be here. And if you're not saved, you need to get saved so you can make sure you're not here during the time of the the actual Antichrist. Um, this pattern will culminate in the final Antichrist at the end of time. We do not need to agonize over identifying who the final Antichrist will be. It is enough to know that Christ's reign will overcome the Antichrist's reign. And that he will be granted sovereignty. For Daniel, the experience of the vision and its interpretation was completely draining. And as a result, he fainted and was sick for some days. Once he was able to return to his normal duties, Daniel was still astonished by it all. Prophecy fulfilled should always amaze us and bolster our faith. And this is a wonderful lesson, but let's be assured. When the Antichrist comes, we won't be here. I don't plan to be here. Um, I'm just going to conclude it with this. The Bible points us to future, to the future so that we can understand God's plan and draw comfort from it. That's what this is about. That's what um, this lesson, illustrating this lesson, that's what it, po it points us to. The Bible points us to the future. So that we can understand God's plan. We need to understand God's plan. So we need to get it together. Understand God's plan. And know that God plans for us to be with him. Those of us that are saved. Those of us that have accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. The only way that we can be with God. And, and be a part of God's plan. Is that we have to be God's people. Those who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Those of us who believe that. Um, he came, died, suffered, and was buried and rose again for our justification. Those of us who put our trust in the Lord. Those of us who ask the Lord to come into our hearts and to live in us. And when he comes to live in us, God will reveal these things to us and give us a better understanding. And so that we can have faith and hope in our future and not be afraid. The prophetic, the prophetic vision of Daniel might have some of us um, confused. But we can be confident that as God fulfilled prophecies in the past, he will also do so in the future. So I pray that um, this lesson blesses, blesses us. Go do some research. Read your Bible. Go read Daniel and get a better understanding. Or keep looking at this lesson to um, hear the words that was detailed out in this lesson to get a better understanding. But we have the prophecies that came to pass and we have the future prophecies yet to come. But we know that God's word is true. And that it did and it will come to pass. May God bless you, keep you, is my prayer. God bless you.